Hey crafters, welcome to Paulette's Pretty Paper Crafts. It is February 19, 2016, and I tried something new today. I did this water coloring with the Copic refills, and I actually die cut this star twice and made a little stand-up card. But today I'm going to show a simpler way to do this and still get, you know, pretty good effect. I'm still having some technical difficulties uh, getting the volume on my videos to be proper, so my apologies. Um, here's what's left of the blender, or excuse me, the Copic refills. I've put blender in this aqua painter, and this just really didn't work like I thought it would. It was very hard to manipulate the colors on this watercolor paper, and so... I don't know. It's just, you know, they do a very drippy thing, and I'm too much of a control freak to do that. So I tried to control the paper and the color, and it didn't work. But look at how this one pops and has the great texture from the blender solution. So I'm going to, you know, after I added the blender solution to that one, I added it to my little Copic watercolor one, and it really helped it. So... But I'm going to show you a faster version um, of how to do this. Uh, it won't be as quick as these two here. These were very streamlined, but I think we'll have fun anyway. So I've pulled some colors that I think probably are in my inspiration piece here. This is a, a rubber starfish that I picked up at Goodwill, and I think it's beautiful. And so we're just going to, I've got that as my inspiration. And this is a Sizzix starfish die. This is an older die. I've cut it in the Canson watercolor paper. And I cut it with the rough side face down. I like to do that, uh, all my die cutting uh, face down. And when I made this little stand-up card, I actually cut the back piece, the smooth side facing the die, so I could write on that. So... You know, it does have this texture on it, but that's okay. I'm still going to write across it, and I made an amazing card with this, so I will be sure and share that with this post. So here's my Canson watercolor paper. I like that 9 by 12 inch pad from Walmart. We're going to start with some Y13, and I'm going to use the chisel tip and just throw this color on here. This, to me, is the easiest way to do it. Go ahead and put your lightest color down first, and then you can build up and add darker colors from there. That's what makes this a pretty fast uh, project. I'm going to pull up the blue fish just as a reference to kind of remember what I did. I'm going to take my medium tone, this R20 Two, which is light prawn and I'm going to put some shadows in here and I like for this to um, fizzle out on the ends so if that didn't work out while I was drawing it on there I'm just going back and filling it in so come heavy to the corner there and then fizzle out on the ends And this alone really brings this die cut to life. It starts to look more realistic. Starfish come in so many different shapes and beautiful colors. If you didn't know that, they really do. We had a beautiful trip to Oregon and California. Gosh, late 1990s, early 2000s. And our kids were still in school, and we went up there to visit some family. Now I'm going to take this R24. Now I'm talking about the beautiful starfish. We stopped at a roadside aquarium, I guess is what you would call it. And they had a, a petting zoo for starfish and sea urchins and sea anemones. And so... We stopped in there, and the kids could just walk by and dip their hands in and touch the starfish. And I have a beautiful photograph in my photo album of some pink, some mauve, and some purple starfish. And I just thought they were amazing. 
So anyway, they're they're very they're very stiff. They're not they look like they would be very flexible and I just wonder how do they move across the floor of the ocean? You know, the conch shells uh, move across the floor of the ocean too, but they have that big muscle and they stick it out the shell and they hop on that muscle. Well, the starfish don't have anything like that. So I guess they have thousands of tiny little legs underneath, maybe underneath, but you don't see them. So I guess that's how they move. So anyway, all right, I'm taking this prawn, light prawn again, and just going around, and now I've got the dark prawn, and I'm just going to enhance and doodle and add some little dots for texture. And you really could just doodle on this to your heart's content. I'm flying by the seat of my pants. I've colored this die cut lots before. I don't think I have any. Uh, I, I usually, I color them and then I use them. I've made some amazing cards over the years and added this starfish to them. People love getting cards with this starfish and all the other little shells and things on it. I think that's one thing that, um, you know, people on a whole usually like the water. So... Now I'm going to go around the edges. The edges feel really bare on this one, so I'm going to go ahead and fill those in. I did not do that on the blue and the pink die cuts. This is, if I'd have left, if I'd have stopped where we did on the other two die cuts, it would have been a five minute, you know, coloring project, but sometimes I get carried away and just, you know, enjoy coloring, and I'm just, you know, uh, experimenting really. As you look at things, you go, well, I could add a little something here and a little something there. And I've got random places of yellow. And so I'm going to add a little bit of this dark yellow, which is the Y18. And really, this could go down anywhere. And you could do absolutely anything because it's all going to blend and fade out a little bit. Because that's what the blender solution does. It bleaches everything out. Now I had this white spot on this one corner and I really meant to grab the Y13 but I ended up with this Y18 and that's okay. So I'm just gonna add a little bit more and then I had pulled this to use it, and I was contemplating putting it down, but I said, you know what, I pulled it, so I'm going to go ahead and draw a few lines on here. And again, this part could have been omitted because once we had the blender solution, everything is going to bleach out a little bit. But, you know, I would say, you know, do, do what makes you happy. Um, I could sit and doodle on stuff for, for a while. And I do think that, you know, as you add these little extra details, it does, it does add something. Even if they're subtle and even if they're in the background, it still adds depth, which is what I try to do. You take a flat piece of cardstock and try to give it some dimension. So here's where I kind of started talking. I was feeling really anxious while I was coloring in with this marker, and I realized that it's because of the blender solution. I was thinking it was because I had just eaten and my food hadn't digested yet, but as I'm doing my voiceover, it's because I absorbed a bunch of blender solution in through you know, my fingertips yesterday because I did this about 20 to 24 hours ago on four cards as well. And then I sat down and did all of these four cards at the same sitting and if you're a very allergic person who 
has the tendency to break out in hives and that kind of thing, you may not want to use this on your cards. Or if you do, you want to do it in a very well ventilated area and you want to wear rubber gloves. I should not have been doing this because I absorbed it through my hands. So as soon as I got done with this project, I did go wash my hands and I did take a Benadryl before I went to bed because, you know, from doing this 20 to 24 hours ago, I already have like on my knees where they're wanting to hive. And you're going to want to be sure and make sure that you're not crafting with children around while you're doing this as well. I caused Millie some hives not too long ago with some spray paint. But look at all this texture. So what do you think? It, it's such a fun, a fun thing, but protect yourself, okay? And I hope you guys are having fun in Kathy's challenge. Okay, so now we're down to actually creating a card. I pulled out some other little nautical die cuts that I have. These tiny little shells are from a Impression Obsession die. And the crabs are from a Martha Stewart punch. The foliage is from a My Favorite Things die, the hibiscus set. And this turned out so cute. My husband loved it. And I wrote on the inside, sending you oceans of love. Happy birthday. And I tied another little die cut onto the back, uh, telling him that it was a ticket to a movie with me for his birthday. So as usual, if you have any questions, be sure and let me know. And I hope you enjoyed a peek at the starfish die cut with some Copic coloring.